and we're here at the first meeting of the South Sudanese Community Association of Maine. What's going on? Oh, well, there used to be just one big organization for all the Sudanese who came here about 10 years ago. But last December, they decided to divide into two groups since the country had divided into two groups. Um, and we're here today for the election of their officers. And what's the process going to be? Well, they've already nominated, they had nominated six candidates, and gradually two people decided that they didn't want the responsibility. So now we're down to four, and I think they're going to vote until they come up with just one. They're also going to vote for the treasurer and the vice president and the secretary and a couple of other um, leaders of committees. And what kind of work does the association do, or will it do? Well, they provide support to uh, individual families. If, if a family is having trouble, the organization will all pitch in and, and give them assistance. Um, they may run workshops. We're planning on running workshops to educate the families about what are some opportunities for their children in terms of education and legal assistance. Um, do all kinds of things, whatever whatever the community wants to do. And they'll probably want to have some kind of fundraisers to send uh, money back home to South Sudan to their native villages. We'll see how that works after we get them organized. And here in Portland, how many people are from South Sudan? Uh, well, this is for the whole community of Maine, so we're talking over 3,000 people. The representation here today, though, is more like uh, maybe th there'll be 300 people voting before the end of the day. And what kind of services do these people need normally? Uh, they need to understand American infrastructure so they can take advantage of everything that's available to all of us. Um, and uh, they also need to know how to avoid pitfalls of starting a business, for example, without any capital, uh, because they, they often try to do that. Because in Africa, you can do that and get away with it. Here, it's a catastrophe. Good evening. I thank you all for being here today and uh, stepping away from your family or your friends to enjoy your Saturday to be here and uh, to do your civic duty and also do, um, I guess, fulfill your duty to your country. Uh, my name is Lars and, well, I'm running for uh, chairman of this community. I'll talk about my future, or at least what I plan to do for the future of this community. As it was mentioned, we need inclusion. We need to include as many branches, as many tribes, and we also need to bring in other communities as well, so that we can actually be stronger when we need to sway a certain uh, opinions, at least get our perspective listened to by the politicians. So well, the first thing that I would want to do is, as they mentioned, they struggled. There is no budget, or there wasn't any budget for 15 years. My plan is to get money, to have grants, to get a good funding, a good amount, so that we can actually hire decent people that can actually do the work, that can lobby for us, even all the way in Washington, or even in, uh, um, in Augusta, to get our point of view listen to. And also for the elders and the youth, ones that want to go to school or want to go to college, to get training for them, to, uh, if they, wanna, uh, they don't want to go to college, to get uh, vocational training so that they can actually get employment, gainful employment, to remain in Maine rather than to uh, go elsewhere hunting for jobs. And for the elders or the elderly, the ones that are aging, if driving is hard or going places is difficult, finding resources that you need or require to survive, uh, my plan is to get assistance with that, either through um, other agencies or governmental grants to actually help your life be much more easier. And to work with other um, I guess my cabinet or my council would be young and to bring in uh, some young females. Uh, I've already spoken to uh, a few and also uh, to um, consider some of the, uh, the current councils who have been doing a wonderful job and continue to do a wonderful job and to have a diverse, distinct opinion, distinct perspective 
and to only not assist our community here, but to also assist our fellow brethren and sisters that were, are left or are still suffering back home. To make life easier, to raise money, to have or to bring in or to create scholarships to bring in our students from South Sudan to raise and encourage young people out here to put them in the South Sudanese government to lobby for the diaspora and also to lobby for the country in Washington. So I guess my plan is, my, my small plan is to get the community become a heavy hitter. You want to matter in this state and you want to matter in this country. So I plan to get you there. Uh, for example, today I invited one of the mayor candidates Tom McMillan is out there in the back. So after this, he's going to be talking to you guys about his point. So doing such outreach, and if, you know, should he be elected, that is uh, an asset and an ally, an ally that we have in the city that can actually help us out. So I'll wait for your questions to uh, elaborate more on this. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for everybody here to be here, and I'm happy to be here. But the first thing I want to say is thank you for everybody to be here, and thank you even we be going for a long time since 1955. And, and I know there's a lot of people passed away because to have this day to be South Sudan a nation. But uh, up from my heart. My grandpa born in the fight, I born in the fight and all the generation. But I just feel there's a time we need to remember this South Sudan it doesn't come overnight. It was a lot of offer from grandpa, from grandma, a lot of people. But today we're happy to have a nation. But we have other jobs to do. The best way to do it, everybody's important. If really we we'll have to make this community strong, I believe, it's about discipline and respect. Everybody's important. If I have a chance to be a Kennedy, the only thing I know, I have to remember I'm a servant. And one of the example, anybody here see me sometime, a root seller. I don't see that one. Because really, since we'll be born in this world, we talk more than job. And I believe if we stop the 75 negative, when we put 75 to be positive, we can make a change. South Sudan is ready for the change, but it's not easy. But I can't do it alone. That's why I would say the first thing to put people, number one, to put the value of the people. Everybody's important. Sometimes we don't disagree, but it doesn't mean we cannot work together. Because chairman, without the people, there is nothing can be done. And the people who are very important, for my concern to be a leader in this community, the mother and the kids. The more we'll be connected with the mother and the kids and the father, we'll get there. The join is not overnight. If in this country we stay here to find people, when you go to the store, somebody asks you, oh, are you on the line? That even it doesn't come overnight. There's a lot of people die before this country be more organized. If we, South Sudanese, we need to have a difference, we need patience, we need to remember everybody fight for this South Sudan. Even Arab, even white people die for this country. Today we have it. Let's just pay respect for the people who die for this nation and how we can make a difference until we accept ourselves, until we love ourselves who we are, because that gives us the key to make a difference. I can't tell you guys I'm here, I'm going to make a change myself. No. The first change is we have to respect yourself, and we have to raise the value of everybody. Everybody's important. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how you look like. If we have that, a vision will be very clear. Because when people unite in the world of one heart and one people, it almost makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bazir Anthony. Thank you, Mawa. Yeah, um, uh, I would like to uh, offer my thanks to the organizing committee that made this election possible. Um, I would like to also thank everybody um, for being a part of this process. Um, 
I know how busy we all are outside of, um, outside of a gathering like this. Um, and uh, I would like to thank all of my opponents as well um, for all the work that they've done to you know, go and talk to you guys, how much research they've done to actually um, come out and start the discussion about the community that we're building. Um, I, I, I know that you guys have um, heard my introduction. Um, I just want to jump straight into um, the reasons why I am here um, contesting for this position. Um, I feel that I represent um, a new perspective. I represent um, a new future for our community here. Um, being a young person, um, I think that <coughs> we are at a point um, in our history where we need to start um, empowering the young people to build a future that may not be imaginable to some of us. Even myself, I, I know that there are things that younger people than myself know better. And I feel like uh, for myself, I represent a new future for this community as, as does the organization. Now with that, I bring new ideas. Um, I know that we've talked a little bit about how hard it is to get this work done um, as, as a person. Um, and that's why I, I would like to propose a new structure to our leadership for this community. Um, what I would like to propose is that instead of just electing um, one chairman and then uh, choosing the offices, I would like to uh, provide more room for more people to be able to participate in, the, in organizing the affairs of my community. So what I'm proposing is to have um, the, the uh, cabinet chair committee. So if, there, if I appoint Lars as uh, Secretary of Finance, I would allow him to get a committee, a financial affairs committee that provides room for some of you guys who are very passionate about the issue of finance, who have ideas, they have vibrant ideas, so that we have more people participating in the affairs of our community instead of um, just having the four or five people that are elected. So I feel that um, that's a new idea that I'm proposing, and I think that's one of the things that I bring on the table that the other candidates aren't bringing forward. Um, another thing that I've heard from our other candidates is that we need unity, and I agree with all of them. This is the one thing that I believe we all um, agree on. And I think that uh, one of the things that I, I again, a, a, a new idea that I bring to the table is that I want to bring the leaders from the smaller communities onto the table so that we're having one big discussion about what's good for all of us South Sudanese rather than um, having smaller discussions at smaller different corners. I would like to bring I've seen some of these leaders here, they're already doing that kind of work. We want to have one big discussion about what's good for all of us. So I feel that um, that is an effort to uniting our community in the way we get things done. Um, I also I would like to stress that I have a strong background in um, working on uh, issues related to uh, education in this community. Um, I've actually... Uh, I've worked on some of the projects that are being implemented in the public school system, one of which is the Make It Happen program, which uh, pairs uh, some of our kids with um, adult mentors who are guiding them um, through their decision-making processes and trying to point out resources to them. Um, I, I, I feel that um, our community um, has the capacity to really provide mentoring and guidance to our kids. And when I, um, I'm elected as chairman, I'll make sure that we create the kind of structure that allows my uncle, who knows a lot about our culture, to be able to um, sit down with another young, young man and be able to um, help them graduate. It's not a big lecture. It's uh, a very small session where we get to close that gap between the young people uh, and the older people. So um, I, I feel that I really bring a lot of new innovative ideas with a strong background in actually uh, program implementation. I served as president of the uh, student government at my college and I felt that I had 
a lot of uh, experience supervising smaller projects and being able to troubleshoot things while, while things go around. So I thank you very much for the time, um, and I appreciate all of you guys. Y'all for coming. Uh, I heard uh, y'all earlier to say thank you, Lord, and I thought it was me, but apparently it was he was referring to, uh, to the other one. Uh, anyway, uh, as you all heard earlier from uh, uh, our sister uh, Nagok, uh, I've been working quite a long years with the Sudanese community. Uh, just before I even touch into that, uh, let me say that I work with four president of Sudanese community. Uh, maybe some of the names will not be clear to uh, to my opponent, but I still remember this guy. Uh, we got the, the old man, uh, uh, Oliver. I'm sure some of you remember that. And we have uh, we have uh, Matthew, uh, that was the second guy replacing his office. And then uh, we have uh, the late uh, Angelo. Uh, uh, may God rest his uh, soul. And then also we have the representative from his administration, which is Sarah, sitting somewhere in there. And then we have Marion, of course. Uh, I have worked with the students' community as a representative to the New York community, as you heard it earlier. And I have done that for quite four years. I think I did okay to my New York community folks, if I'm not mistaken. I was able to pass some of the information from the students' community to the New York community and able for us to kind of like agree to uh, some common ground and how we move forward as a student is back at the time. Uh, anyways, uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, uh, our community. Uh, we have community. We don't have differences. We think we have differences, but apparently we don't. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, our differences, we make them up or we create them based on what we heard. Uh, and we just kind of like push it from there and say, hey, well, this is what I heard, so I really don't like Kwan. So we don't have any, uh, we have a diversity community that have some issues. But, I mean, how could we solve our issues if we do not talk about it? Uh, the best way to do it is to talk about it. And I am very confident that I can talk to any of you, you take it from my community, which is the New York community, and pass it along to other three communities and the friend group. I have in contact with each one of them. And I will not really be shy to say, uh, tell John that, hey, John, I'm from uh, the student community, and this is exactly what I want from you, uh, partners, from in, uh, in the friend group. Well, one thing that motivated me was, like my, uh, like uh, one mentioned earlier, uh, last uh, three Sundays ago, we went to a uh, debate. And that debate was uh, only two people. It was uh, Mr. Lowes and Mr. Bajay. I was not planning on running that back then. I was sitting just like you were sitting. I asked you a question that I did not get a response to it until I left. And then I went home, turned my TV on, and I was like, eh. But they did not answer my question earlier. <laughs> Neither do Laos. So I'm going to challenge you guys because I know more about the community than they do. Bazet is already running a Sudanese community under the name of Project Bazet. So if you're going to go, if Tony or Bazet will tell me that he can go and convince Governor LePage that say, hey, the Project Bazet is totally different and the South Sudan community is totally different, it is not going to work. <laughs> Knowing that he's using the Project Bazet under my kid's name, which is we're still waiting for the Disney trip. <laughs> my kid and I from his, uh, from his organization. And then he's coming back to try to get those kids that he has their information, their dad information, which is me. And I was like, it's not going to work. I will run against you and point out that you're doing the same thing as, uh, as you're running for. Apparently, the lady I'm sure she's hearing too, they have not done well since they started. I don't know what that has to do with, I don't know. But if I'm elected, I will stand behind him and make sure that uh, the state know whose project was it because it is running under our community name. And then Laos, which is, I never heard of him. I was, <laughs> I was at the store 
talking to people, and then they were asking me a question. Like, hey, who's ready? And I was like, well, there's Laos, there's John, there's Bade, yeah, I know Bade. And then, who's, who's Laos? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I really did. That was my answer. I don't know. And then they were like, okay, well, who's John? And I was like, well, John, he's, young, he's this young guy who graduated last year from uh, Farmington. Oh, is he here all, all this time? And I was like, yeah, he is here. And then they try to find out who his family is. I do know his brother for a long time. <laughs> because we used to play uh, soccer together. So I was like, I try to link him to his brother, so maybe he will get a hold of who John is, but apparently it didn't work out either. So I think I'm, uh, I'm the only one here standing uh, in front of my <laughs> fellows that know each one of you. I may not know exactly where you're moving nowadays because of Section 8 that was provided by Mariana and his group, but <laughs> <laughs> I used to know where you all live. Let's, let me come back to what... Yeah, just, I just want to get to my motivation to be the next guy. Yeah, so, uh, and then when I took all this into processing, I was like, well, you know what? I think I'll, I will be a better candidate. And here are my five, uh, five things that I would like to do if I'm elected as the chairman. First, uh, we, we have many, 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 many citizens here. I'm one of them, and you are one of them. I will make sure somebody like uh, Mr. Tom Millen, who's standing behind there, understand that my vote is considered. And I will organize that, take your vote and my vote, we'll talk to Mr. Millen and say, hey, well, enable for me to support you, this is exactly my struggle. I will make sure you understand that part. Secondly, we have something called after school and before school program, which is a lot of our mothers, they use it. I will make sure that I talk to the school department to make sure that we have at least a Sudanese person that will be at the after school and before school and help our kids in any kind of way, behavior, knowing that there's somebody that is related to him or his cousin working in the same department, it reduce behavior and instead of just having somebody who they never they will never meet watching them. Third, and nevertheless, I agree with what uh, Lao said. We need to look for some grant for our school uh, students. They have done their best without any help, and yet we've been here for more than 13 years. John is one of the examples who really did it on his own. I agree that we need to find some way to help our young guys go through school. And uh, the fourth one is, I'm sorry I'm taking too long. I went to DHS one time, and uh, there was a lady who was standing there from 6 in the morning until 6 at night, and she did not meet anybody. Yes, she was not a Sudanese woman, but she was somebody who needed help. Imagine if one of us goes through the same thing. I will make sure DHS really understand that we need help when we call for it. That's my force. And nevertheless, uh, we used to have something called a, uh, a program for use after the school off, which is school vacation, whatever three months we have. That program used to, used to exist, and uh, if Dominic was here, he, he would tell us more about it. But it's dead, I will work it up. Thank you.